La Nina is headed our way just in time for winter. I want to show you what that means for the outlook. It is July 29th, 2025, and I'll update this as we get closer to winter. Thank you for being with me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields, and thank you for subscribing to this uh, growing community. Now, we get a look at uh, El Nino and La Nina. What is that? Well, El Nino, here's the Pacific Ocean, is very warm water, especially the Eastern Pacific. La Nina would be the opposite, cooler water. And when you have big changes and water temperatures uh, that does impact the weather across uh, Earth. So uh, we're watching out for those kind of signals, the change in water temperatures in parts of the Pacific to see kind of what phase we're in. It does look like we're going to get into at least a week uh, La Nina as we work our way into the winter. Here's the outlook on that. When you look at this chart, I know it's a little crazy, a lot going on, but in this chart, the blue shading would be a La Nina. Uh, the uh, red shading would be the chances of an El Nino, and you see how that is very low. We're not going to have an El Nino pattern. The gray shading would be a neutral phase, somewhere in between. There's that in-between phase, not really El Nino or La Nina, but as we work our way into winter, you see this blue shading kind of bumping up, and that is telling me we have that better chance of a La Nina winter headed our way. You can see here, this is August, September, October. This is October, November, December. And here's, as we work our way into winter, December, January, February, you see that blue shading right there. So at least a week La Nina, not all El Ninos and La Ninas are the same, but at least a week La Nina headed our way across Europe and across the globe as we work our way into winter, just in time for winter. What does that mean though? What does it mean for our weather? What are we going to get? What is it going to be like? Well, typically in a La Nina, even a weak La Nina, it is drier than average, which for a lot of us is not good, especially with all those wildfires we've been dealing with in so many spots. But here's the overall outlook. And I wanna show you also what it doesn't mean in just a moment. But uh, this is the outlook for December, where you're seeing this yellow or orangey shading in here. This would be below average rain or snow chances and where you're seeing this green shading that would be slightly above average uh, chances of getting some precipitation now with that said most of us at least in that uh, drier than average the white shading would be generally average southern sections uh, Italy maybe back toward Turkey where we desperately need some rain slightly above but you can see for the most part in December below average let's take a look at January for uh, the precipitation outlook once again Again, there's not a lot of green on the map, maybe a few spots above average, but for a whole, much of us at average or below average with rain and snow as we work our way into January. Let's take a look at February going forward, uh, even drier in some spots. Once again, southern sections may be a little bit above average, but overall it looks to be drier. This goes hand in hand with a La Nina uh, pattern. So we look to see a drier winter overall. It does not mean though, we're not going to get rain and even some big snows at times. It doesn't mean that, uh, but it does mean overall, once we'll eventually look back at the winter, it should be below average in many locations. Now, what does it mean for the temperatures? Well, the temperature's a different story. Uh, we talk about the polar vortex sometimes. Let's just say a lot of cold air uh, up to the north, and sometimes that breaks free. It is more likely to break free and head our way in a La Nina winter. Usually uh, in an El Nino pattern, the polar vortex is very stable. Everything kind of stays up uh, to the north for the most part. In a La Nina cycle, things are more dynamic. You even get some warm air surges at times, but you get these uh, kind of, let's just say, bumps in the jet stream. The polar jet uh, is more dynamic. It is shifting more. So with that said, while we could get some rounds of some warm air, it is more likely to bring down occasionally uh, the polar vortex or the very, very, very cold air at times. So it looks like that'll be more dynamic. So drier than average, uh, but with that said, or and with that said, colder uh, at times. So a La Nina winter outlook, La Nina is becoming more likely. It doesn't look like a big La Nina, but those chances are bumping up as we work our way into the winter. That means typically drier than average, so giving you the heads up, but it doesn't negate big snows or even rain. That sometimes uh, gets, uh, this kind of grabs the headline that it's going to be dry. Yes, maybe drier than average, but there will still be at times big snows, especially with a jet stream that is a little more dynamic. That could actually 
actually bring some stronger storm systems moving in. So that's kind of uh, the uh, difference there. Yes, drier than average, but there could actually be some bigger storm systems moving in, and those colder outbreaks will be more likely with more of a dynamic changing polar vortex and polar uh, jet stream will get some bigger cold outbreaks. So it is going to be no doubt a very interesting winter as we head forward. And I'll be watching that outlook for you right here. So again, thank you for being part of this weather community. Now I want to get back to today because we do have some big storms on the way. This is later today. A lot of that shifting off to the east. With that said, we've had some terrible uh, fires, horrific fires in spots. Turkey, but more were popping up yesterday. As I've been watching over toward Portugal, uh, parts of Spain. On the flip side, we've had some of that flooding in parts of Poland. That storm system, or at least some of that energy, is going to be lifting north and off toward the east as we go throughout the day. Here's the setup uh, for today. There's a big spin uh, over toward Norway, Sweden, and Finland. That is what is really going to be changing our weather as we go throughout the day. We have one spin up here. Here's Iceland. Another spin sitting up here. We'll get some of those uh, gusty winds, but the rain at times. With this spin up here, that is going to keep us active with that chance of storms as the day goes. You see this big swirl sitting right in through here, and that'll bring us a better chance of some of that rain in our eastern sections. We could get clipped by a couple showers. So we've seen a couple near England over toward Wales. Not widespread, no doubt. We need to get some more rain. Uh, but as we work our way back toward France, Spain, Portugal, mainly on the dry side, although we'll get a couple storms popping up, but watching that fire threat, same thing in Turkey, most of the rain is just to the north or swinging just back toward uh, the uh, west. Even parts of Bulgaria, uh, we could get a couple showers and storms over the next few days. With that, a change in temperatures for some of us. I've been mentioning how Portugal, will we're going to be so very hot today. We already are. Uh, that heat is building in. We were 29 yesterday, 37 degrees today in Lisbon. This goes hand in hand with the dry air and that fire threat over toward Portugal and parts of Spain throughout the day. Let me show you the storms on the move. Now hit or miss in France, but here are some of the big stuff. Belarus, Ukraine, watching over toward uh, Romania for some of those storms. We may get clipped by a couple in Bulgaria over toward Serbia, then Croatia, Slovenia, Austria, seeing some showers and storms. Czechia, Slovakia over toward Hungary. We could get a couple isolated showers. A few sneaking in to Belgium, uh, parts of Germany, and parts of France, just not widespread. Then as we work our way into our Wednesday forecast, most of the energy shifts up to the north as far as that rain threat goes, but there'll still be some spotty showers and storms. We may get one northern Italy and Switzerland. Ukraine will have some of the storms on the move. And then once we work our way into Thursday, look at this. I'll keep an eye on this. We'll get a chance of some rain. Uh, Bulgaria back through Kosovo, North Macedonia over toward Albania, maybe clipping by Greece, and maybe a pop up shower back through uh, Turkey where we desperately need it. And then hit or miss thunderstorms, a few in Spain, not as much Portugal, a couple in France, northern France, Netherlands, Belgium, Germany. We could get a few showers and a rumble of thunder as we work our way deeper into our Thursday. Let's get back to today as we lift up to the north. Here are those storms near Belarus in Ukraine, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, seeing some of that rain there. Some of the rain, Norway, Sweden, and Finland will have some of that moisture around and watching out for a few light spotty showers. I mentioned England, Wales, we've had a couple nearby, but not a whole lot. Northern Ireland, Ireland, uh, Scotland, mainly on the uh, dry side. As we work our way into tomorrow, again, some of that uh, active weather in Iceland, still a chance of some showers. More of that pools to the north, but Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, seeing some of that rain, and then seeing some of that trying to work its way back through Denmark, clipping by Germany. Same thing on Thursday. We may see a couple showers sneaking in a few spots, but here are a couple showers and even thunderstorms possible back through Sweden. Sweden as we work our way into Thursday and a little shot at a few showers uh, watching Scotland down toward uh, England. We may get brushed by a couple of those showers and then we'll see a few popping up. Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, France, Germany, just not widespread. Poland, not a lot of action, which is good because of the flooding that we had uh, yesterday. All right, looking at some of the rain totals, not very impressive across the UK, uh, back through uh, Ireland. If we do see a shower just brushing us by, but as we swing back, you can see here, as we swing back toward uh, Copenhagen, for example, a better chance of getting some of the uh, rain, even driving back into northern Germany, where we could get some repeat rain that can lend itself to 75 millimeters of rain or higher in some spots. Same thing, parts of Sweden 
and then dipping down toward uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Poland, still northern side and central zones. Chance of some of that additional rain monitoring that flooding where we need the rain. We're not getting it. Spain, Portugal, only some isolated stuff over toward Andorra. Uh, but if we get some thunderstorms, that could give us over 75 millimeters of rain. Again, not all of us in Serbia, for example, but a few of us. Uh, Bosnia, we could see a couple of those storms. In the northern sections of Greece, we could get a couple isolated showers and storms over the next few days. So a little active in some different areas. I'll be watching that. But these scattered areas of rain will also uh, be accompanied by some stronger storms and monitoring that heat and that fire threat, no doubt. And I'll continue to monitor the long-term trends with La Nina as we approach uh, the upcoming winter. And I'll update what I'm seeing as we get closer to help give you a feel. But as of now, looking drier than average and colder at times, some big cold outbreaks that will be headed our way. All right, thank you for being part of this channel. Have a great rest of your day.